Well, um, I've always uh, felt that giving back to our country, um, and I know that patriotism is something that's one of your values here, giving back to the country is a responsibility of, um, you know, of every American, and uh, I did well in business, and uh, I wanted to give back, and, and, and put my efforts into making the country stronger and better, and I did that um, on the State Board of Education for a while, where I got to know uh, Congressman Schaefer, and then in, uh, in the United States Congress really you don't always have the opportunity to run for Congress because frequently there's a member, of, let's say, of a certain party that's there for a while. Usually, if you're in that party, you don't challenge that person because they're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the graduated um, Well, I think when we're talking about tax reform, um, generally what it means is a flatter rate with less deduction. So I think that's the direction we should go, is a flatter rate with less deductions. Now. Um, a lot of the deductions like home mortgage interest and some of those, they might have to be capped or done away with to kind of bring down the rates. But, um, you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, obviously people who don't earn much money can't afford to pay anything in taxes. In fact, they might even be receiving food stamps or something. But the, the Rules Committee has a larger majority for the majority party. So it has uh, a total of um, 13 members and it has nine from the majority party and four from the minority party. Um, and the reason that it has a larger majority is the speaker needs that committee to get any bill to the floor uh, and they need to be able to make sure that they can muster a majority on that committee to get a bill to the floor because um, they need a rule to pass to get any bill to the floor. So it, it should be no surprise, you know, that, that um, you know, Nancy Pelosi from uh, San Francisco would feel very different about an issue from uh, Louis Gomer from Texas or Steve King from Iowa. So, I mean, there's very different perspectives where, generally speaking, most members of Congress, most of them, reflect their constituents. If they didn't, they probably wouldn't be there. Doesn't mean they're, you know, 100% of the time, though, you know, if you agree with all their constituents and everything, but by and large, most members are really representatives, and that's the title of their job, of their communities. And they take that job very seriously to listen to their constituents, and to try to act in a way that's consistent with the values that they have, which are generally consistent with the values of the constituents that sent them there, which is why their constituents sent them there in the first place. Um, so, while well, certainly there's room for Congress institutionally to improve, and I'd be happy to hear you know, your suggestions about that, I certainly have my own, um, I hope that the country as a whole can kind of elevate its discussion and, and, and not, not ever sacrifice values or ideals, but at least come to some agreements. For instance, one pressing issue that we need to deal with, particularly for uh, young people, but for people of all ages, is restoring the fiscal integrity of our country, balancing our deficit, putting ourselves on firm fiscal footing for the next several decades of both. Um, so it, basically, the people that assign committees are the leadership of both parties, but also the committee chair has some say. So um, you just try to be, and, and, and different committees are coveted to different degrees too. So I mean, um, the committee that um, I served on last term, also one that Bob served on, is uh, Mr. Schaefer served on, um, is the um, is the uh, education committee. That one is, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, is considered less desirable than some other committees. So if you really express an interest in education, as uh, Congressman Schaefer and I both did, you should be able to get on that. By the way, this is Sergey. He is from Russia. What you not sure? What you not sure? The um, so don't say you're working on something against uh, Russia. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I work. I mean, working on a lot of different bills. I do work on a lot of education. Um, so there, I don't know if they're uh, the bills are going anywhere now. But we're working on actually a lot of things that kind of mirror what Colorado has in terms of evaluating educators um, and, and so forth to try to, uh, to, try to help other states um, move towards a process like Colorado now has um, in its district schools, um, charter schools. I'm also a big fan of, so I do, I'm kind of one of the lead legislators on charter schools nationally because I, I'm the only member of Congress who ran a charter school, so um, I, I do a lot of the The people that assign committees are the leadership of both parties but also the committee chair has some say. So um, you just try to be, and, and, and different committees are coveted to different degrees too. So I mean, 
um, the committee that um, I served on last term, also one that Bob served on, is uh, Mr. Schaefer served on, um, is the um, is the uh, education committee. That one is, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion, is considered less desirable than some other committees. So, if you really express an interest in education, as uh, Congressman Schaefer and I both did, you should be able to get on. That's something that you're personally or morally opposed to. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile? Well, first of all, you know, people of a district, any district, want all sorts of things and they don't agree with one another. So, I mean, every district in the country, every district, has conservative Republicans, liberal Democrats, people in the middle, communists, anarchists, socialists, Tea Party, Occupy. I mean, they're represented out of every group of 750,000 people. There's going to be some of each. Now, they're in different proportions in each district, to be clear. Uh, some districts uh, might have more Occupy people, some might have more um, Tea Party people. So it's just up to the district. But ultimately, at the end of the day, every member of Congress has to be, uh, has to vote their conscience and has to be comfortable with how they vote. And so not every issue is an issue of conscience. In fact, most issues are not. Most issues are practical issues where you're trying to figure out what people want in their communities, what they value, you try to listen to people and try to be an effective representative, which is the job title to uh, help bring them what they want. But when there's an issue of conscience, uh, you're going to vote, or at least I would, my conscience, um, even if it means that I wouldn't be back for another term. There's plenty of other things to do in life, but I was elected to serve as a representative for two years, and that means to use my judgment and, and my morality the best of my ability to, to serve for those two years. And if the people aren't happy with those decisions, then they won't send you for another two years if you choose to run again. Um, but if you sacrifice your, your morals, uh, then why even bother, you know, why bother being uh, listen, why bother? Why bother serving? I mean, it, it's only, it, you might as well let somebody else. These committee assignments are controlled by the party leaders on both sides. But keep this in mind: the party leaders are elected by the members. So um, you know, it, it, while it may seem like the party leaders have all this power, they only operate in the good graces of the members of their party that are there. So if they don't assign anybody to the committees they want, guess what? They can be toppled as party. Leaders. Well, um, they're both fascinating committees. Um, Rules is interesting because you see a little bit of everything, and uh, it gives me the ability to help try to get amendments to alter bills in, in sometimes small ways, but out, after they're out of committee, uh, I can work to get amendments included in bills and different areas um, where people kind of jump in on a bill for just like personal stuff, like uh, say you're passing a bill on economics or something, and I don't know, how many congressmen do you think would like kind of jump in for like a pork barrel or something for their dish? Oh yeah, there's a bit of that. So uh, the one thing that's uh, no longer there, um, that used to be there when uh, Congressman Schaefer was there, and uh, even in my first term, was this was something called earmarks. So they don't have member-directed money, but they have other ways where they do almost the same thing, um, uh, where they direct money or, or put political bills in as kind of a favorite. And do you have a law degree? No. no. What was your business? I was a businessman, so um, on the Judiciary Committee, I think there's three of us that are not attorneys, uh, which is good because we keep the attorneys in check. <laughs> uh, I was a business person, so, um, you know, attorneys have a certain perspective, and it's, some of you might become attorneys someday, it's certainly a valid perspective, but it's, it's one of, it's one of the, a different perspective. So, I mean, as a, 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 bus a businessman, you're always trying to direct the attorneys to get to the outcome trying to contain their natural desire to do kind of everything in excess. What are your views on the, uh, this economics as a whole, like how much the government, you know, participates in certain things? Well, economics as a whole is an excellent discipline that I wish public policymakers would, would heed more, uh, <laughs> frankly, uh, on both sides of the aisle. Um, we all economics is, is largely ignored. What's that? I so I think we all... Yeah, it's, it's, um, I wish that there were more economists in Congress. There's not a lot of them. Um, both parties um, advance policies that, again, might poll well, and in fact, they might even the policies might even be derived from uh, the fact that they poll well. They, they, and both parties do this; they poll different policies, and they you know, polls well, so that's their that's their policy. It's not because it's their moral policy, and it's not because it's good economics. It's because the policy polled well. And it might be. So um, on criminal justice and civil rights. Um, you know, I, I'm big on protecting uh, individual liberties. Um, so, for instance, um, there's well, one, one bill that just passed, and I, we'd actually got one amendment in to make it a little better, 
but it was um, it was called CISPA, and it was a cybersecurity bill. But in my opinion, it went too far in um, in, in, in in not protecting our individual private information. Uh, you know, we'll be paying the price in ten or fifteen years, and neither party will like the price because what will the price mean? Uh, Republicans won't like the price because it will include large tax hikes. Democrats won't like the price because it will include gutting the social safety net that Democrats care about. Um, and this can be fixed and put on good fiscal footing now with relatively minor changes. Uh, and that's what a group called the Bull Simpson Commission effectively put together. And there's a group in the Senate called the Gang of Six that put together a workable proposal. Uh, either one of those fundamentally would have balance the budget and restore our fiscal integrity, but Congress hasn't really taken those up. So they continue to kind of ignore this issue, which you could do for a year, two years, or three years, but the danger is if you ignore uh, the looming fiscal crisis, and fiscal means financial crisis of our country for 10 or 15 years, yeah, we will be in a much more uh, dire straits than we are now, and it will require drastic change that neither party nor the American people. How did you go about choosing the party you wanted to run for? and? Have you ever thought about switching? Choosing the party. Party. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I guess it's somewhat unfortunate in our system that there are really, it's set up in a way where there are, you know, realistically uh, two parties. And let's say somebody was elected to Congress as an independent. They, they, if only one was elected as an independent, they wouldn't have any ability to be an effective congressperson unless they joined basically, for, for all intents and purposes, one part or the other to get committee membership uh, and to get to operate there. So now it would be very different if 20 or 30 people were elected that were independent. But um, there is no uh, structure in place for one or two or three people to be independent in Congress. Again, independents have been elected, but they've chosen to join in Congress one part or the other. Um, like when Bernie Sanders was in Congress, um, and he was in Congress at the same time Congressman Schaefer was there, he was independent. He, would, he said he was a socialist, but he, he caucused with the Democrats and he got committee assignments through them. Um, electorally, it's, it's, har it's, it's harder to win as an independent, but it's certainly not impossible. Um, so I, I think it's less of a concern electorally. I mean, it's certainly a concern because Democrats and Republicans start out with a built-in advantage just because they both have a party apparatus behind them. But an independent can absolutely win. In fact, um, very recently for governor, Tom Tancredo ran as an independent and, and came in well ahead of the Republican candidate without the use of that party infrastructure. Now, uh, he, he, he lost narrowly to, to John Hickenlooper, but uh, it showed that, and it's been shown time and time again, many states have an independent governor's um, Joe Lieberman won as an independent. Lisa Murkowski in Alaska won as an independent. She's a what senator. committees are you on in Congress? I'm on Judiciary and Rules. And uh, they're both very exciting committees. Rules uh, oversees a little bit of everything. So Rules is the committee that oversees the amendment process. And if we didn't have a Rules Committee, the House would uh, never go anywhere. I mean, it would, it would spend months and months debating one bill. What does Rules do? It says the time limit for this bill is five hours of debate. And even though there's 250 members who have different amendment ideas, we're only going to allow eight of them to be debated on and voted on. It's not overseas film piracy. Overseas film piracy? Yeah. That was, uh, and that was a lot of the debate around PIPA and SOPA, right? So um, this is uh, what, what, what Hollywood uh, industry folks and, and film producers were coming to Congress and you know, they had millions of lobbyists and so forth, not millions, but you know, they had many, many lobbyists. They would come and say, look, our films are being pirated overseas, therefore you need to pass SOPA. And uh, it's all, and, and of course, the films are pirated overseas. Now, first of all, a couple points. Um, they ex highly exaggerate the damage uh, to their studio. Well, something that you're personally or morally opposed to. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile it? Well, first of all, you know, people of a district, any district, want all sorts of things and they don't agree with one another. So, I mean, every district in the country, every district has conservative Republicans, liberal Democrats, people in the middle, communists, anarchists, socialists, Tea Party, Occupy. I mean, they're represented out of every group of 750,000 people. There's going to be some of each. Now, they're in different proportions in each district, to be clear. Uh, some districts uh, might have more Occupy people, some might have more um, Tea Party people. So it's just up to the district. But ultimately, at the end of the day, every member of Congress has to be, uh, has to vote their conscience and has to be comfortable with how they vote. And so not every issue is an issue of conscience. With the redistricting, do you think it'll be harder or easier for you to be elected? 
Um, you know, the, the, the district is a great district. Um, I think it's, it, it suits a lot of the issues I work on in Congress. It has, uh, the, the area that it, the, the main change was the second congressional district of Colorado did include Adams County. So I have Thornton, Westminster area. That's the area that's now in a different district. And this district goes north. You just kind of like wave your arms around and you complain about things, but you can't actually really pack control the agenda or pass laws. When you're the majority party, doesn't mean you agree with everything your own party does by any means, but your party at least, and you get some say in it, is trying to, uh, it sort of controls the agenda and the floor of the house. It would be interesting to do like a four-year term and have half the house up every other year. You know, I, I think my, my preferred option would be some kind of campaign finance reform or some mechanism where members didn't have to spend all their time raising money. Um, um, do you plan on changing your cost board or the way you voted on to reflect the more conservative Northern Colorado area? Well, I mean, part of what you do as a member of Congress, too, is you listen to your constituents. So, um, you know, we have held lots and lots of you know, town hall meetings and you know, it's also who calls your office and letters, so people call, write emails, letters, and town halls. And you try to take the pulse of all of them. But at the end of the day, you have to uh, vote your conscience. You can't go to sleep saying, I voted something I didn't believe in, you know, because the, uh, more people called in. Now, you know, every issue is not a matter of conscience. I mean, how you vote on a particular issue, but it's just, it just might be more, well, I see both sides, and my constituents feel this way, so I'm going to go that way. But when there's an issue of conscience, um, you know, you would say, well, look, uh, this is the way I feel, whether it means I agree with it or not, you know, and, and they elect me to, people elect me to represent them for two years, and um, I'm not going to, you know, compromise my morality over something to, just to try to stay in office. I get plenty of other things I can do. But I would say that that's not every issue. I mean, many, many issues are going to be more along the lines of, um, you might not have